afternoon. Welcome back to another video. I've decided that uh, I need a bit of woodland photography in my life and as such I've ventured out to the abandoned gunpowder works of Kennel Vale between Redruth and Falmouth. I'm not sure if this really does qualify as woodland photography as my main focus when shooting here is usually the river running down through the valley and the old incorporating mills that still line the riverbank. Um, as I've said in the past I, I tend to struggle with woodland photography. I often can't see the wood for the trees and so I like to use a river or a path or a building or something to make it obvious what it is that I'm shooting. Most of, the, most of the time we photographers would love to have some woodland mist. Unfortunately, we don't seem to have had any of that for about 12 months, um, which is a bit of a disappointment because that really does help to create a nice atmosphere in the woods. But regardless of that, we'll take a wander down through the valley today and we'll see what we can find, see what compositions there are, and uh, I hope you enjoy the video. So here we are down by the river. Um, there's actually not as much water here today as I was expecting there to be, considering the amount of rain we've had recently. The water level is quite low, but that's that's fine. There's still some nice movement there. Um, I've, I've framed up my first composition of the day, which is just a simple shot of the water cascading down over the rocks at the top end of the, the valley here. The um, Beyond that wall is private land. We can't actually go in there, but we don't need to for what we're doing here. Uh, it, is a, it is a long exposure. I do like to use a long exposure when there's water involved. So I'm using my Nisi Landscape CPL, my circular polarizing filter, just to take the glare off of the water, control the balance of the whites and the amount of light that's being reflected. Even though it's quite an overcast day, you still get quite a lot of light reflecting off the white parts of the, of the, the image. So we're just using the polarizer control. I don't need any other filters for that. I've got the shutter speed set at one sixth of a second. I've already taken that image and I will buzz you around in a second and I will show you what it looks like on the back of the screen. So here we are, here's the composition as it's framed up on the back of the screen. You can see that we've uh, we've still got some nice autumn leaves in there actually, uh, some lovely browns against those greens. We've got some beautiful green color in there today uh, and, and the water just cascading down through that gap. This is, a, this is an image that I've shot previously, but uh, the water level again was a lot lower at the time. As I said, I'm quite surprised. Normally you can hear this river long before you see it from the top end of the, the valley as we come in. But um, today she's quite quiet, but uh, I've taken that shot and uh, I will pop that up on the screen for you in just a second. So we've moved a little bit further downstream now, just uh, the other side of the bridge. Uh, and as you can see behind me, just here, is one of those incorporating mills that I was talking about on the bank of the river. This entire place was run by water. There are a number of leets that, that run in different places around here that would have powered big water wheels. Um, the place was a gunpowder works. So I guess you didn't want any sparks or any heat sources around here that might cause an explosion. Although I believe there were a number of explosions around here, some, uh, some that were quite big. So normally when shooting the river, this would be the sort of composition that I would use, trying to get a, a head-on view looking straight up through there. Um, and you really can see how low this water level is at the moment. I'm, I'm quite amazed. But um, today, just for something a bit different, I've, uh, I've decided to come around a little bit. There's the camera. And just give it a little bit of an angle. So it's, it's, more, it's more like that with the river running down through. In fact, I'll show you on the back of the camera there, look. So that's what it's looking like on the back of the screen. If I'm getting close enough for you to see it. There we go. Uh, I'll show you the image that I've already taken, which is this one. And I'm thinking that that's looking quite nice. Some lovely greens in there again. Some really nice reds and colours from, there from the, the dead leaves. Nice movement of the water, even though the water level is low. And I, I think that's going to come out looking really nice. So I will uh, pop that up on the screen for you now. Why 
right, let's take a little wander across that bridge behind me and uh, head on down behind the incorporating mills and see if one of the leaks is running. If it is, we'll try and grab an image of that and I will talk you through that on the way. So here behind me is uh, one of those leaks that I was talking about uh, that normally would uh, be running. But today, with that low water level, there's absolutely nothing. It's completely bone dry. So unfortunately, I won't be able to take any images of that for you. However, I do believe that I've got some images from previous visits of the leaks actually flowing. And I will, uh, I'll go back through and, and get one of those and put it on the screen for you so you can see what it would look like if it was actually running. <music> So if you are enjoying the video, please do give us a, a like and a, maybe consider subscribing. Um, it uh, helps the YouTube algorithms to know what's popular uh, and helps me to, to grow, helps me to reach a new audience. So please do like and subscribe if you're enjoying what you see. Okay, so here's a little bit of a bonus image, I think. Um, I'm, I'm quite familiar with this location. This is one of my favorite woodlands to come and walk and, and do photography. Um, and if you are coming out here, please do respect the place. Please do look after the place because it's, it's beautiful. But, uh, you know, human activity and all that tends to have a, a negative effect. But what I'm looking at right now is this stream coming down over here through the woods. And I've, I've composed an image on the back of the camera, which I shall show you in just a second. Um, one of the things that I do try and do in my woodland photography is to, to limit the amount of sky that's in a shot. And when you see this composition in a moment, you'll see that I've, I've tried to get in as tight as I possibly can to avoid any sky in the shot, any distractions in the shot. It's not always possible. Sometimes you get some elements in an image that you're not entirely happy with, but it's about compromise and you have to compromise on what you're getting in this image. There are a couple of things here I'm not happy with, but uh, let me show you on the back of the camera. So here's that image on the back of the screen. Uh, really like the, the water coming down through there with the moss covered boulders and the, the orangey colored leaves. Now, one of the elements that I was talking about that I'm not entirely happy with is that tree on the right hand side there, part way up the image. There's a, a, a log or something next to it, which I can't get out of the image. So it's, it's not a major problem, but to me, it's a little bit of a distraction. But as you can see, I've tried to get the length of the stream flowing down through there, but I, I don't include any of the sky at all. Uh, which, I mean, particularly this time of the year when there's no leaves on the tree, you really don't want that sky in the shot anyway. So I'm going to take that shot and then I will pop that up on the screen for you to have a look at. So I hope you can still hear me down here at the bottom end of the valley. Um, this is as, as far as I tend to go down. Uh, and just behind me here, you can see this old bridge, which uh, is, is one of the things that I like to shoot here. In fact, now we've reached the bottom end of the valley, we're starting to get towards some of my favorite compositions. And this bridge is one of them. Um, the, the observant amongst you might also have noticed that I'm, I'm currently mic'd up. So hopefully you're getting a better audio quality from this. Now, one of the things I've noticed here is, is this tree that um, has, has been across the river for many years. I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually broken just here uh, and actually dropped onto these rocks, which means that it's, it's become more difficult. Normally I try to shoot this, this image with the, the, the tree over the, the top of the bridge to give a bit of a gap. Now I've managed to do it. I've managed to get a composition where I've got a little bit of a gap, but it's not been an easy one to achieve. I had to break out the mini tripod 
to try and get me low enough. So uh, I'll turn you around a bit and show you what I'm looking at. So there we are. There's the camera set up on the mini tripod. It's a, it's a little Manfrotto tripod that I, I use. I quite often use this one when I'm doing some uh, mushroom photography, wooden floor photography. It allows me to get nice and low in a, in a very small area, so I'm I'm less uh, in, intrusive in the uh, the surrounding vegetation and, and what have you. But again, with the composition of this image, I've uh, attempted to minimise the amount of sky that I've got in the shot. And um, I'll show you the the image on the back of the camera in a moment. You'll, you'll notice that it's only sort of the, the top corner where I've got a little bit of light coming through between the trees. It's um uh, it, it's not been easy to get that composition because uh, I said this this tree having dropped down as it has. Um, and being right on the edge of this mossy bit of rock without uh, the camera slipping into the water. But let me show you the, the image on the back of the screen. So there's the composition that I'm working with. As you can see, there is some light coming through the trees in that top left-hand corner, but it's, it's minimal. I can live with it. Uh, I've got that gap between the, the bridge and that branch that's leading across. I've got that beautiful water movement in the foreground. Um, I've, I've, I, like I said, I've taken the image already, so I will pop that up on the screen for you to enjoy. So this is one of my favorite compositions here with the, uh, the incorporated mills on the bank of the river and the river coming down through there. Um, I've shot this, this particular composition on a number of occasions now in, in different lights. Um, today it is quite flat, so I'll have to find a composition that makes the most of what's actually in the view rather than relying on the light coming through. Um, one of the things I should mention with, with long exposure photography is that you do need to watch that light. Today, as I said, it's quite flat and grey and overcast, so there's not a rapidly changing light. But if you had a day where there was a lot of light coming through the trees, there was a lot of cloud moving overhead, then that could cause a problem with a long exposure, simply because the, change, the regular changing of the light, you're, you're relying on having a, a steady light at that particular time to do what you're trying to do with the long exposure. So if you are in rapidly changing conditions, you, you may have to watch just how long you're using that exposure, or you may just have to be patient and wait for the light to alter so that um, it's, it's to your benefit. But um, let's get this composition set up and then we can have a look at it. So I've, uh, I've composed the shot, and as you can see, the camera's set up there behind me. There's the, uh, there's the incorporated mills in the river. So let me just swing you around and show you what it looks like on the back of the screen. So there's the live view of the image. Uh, as you can see, the composition, now, uh, there, is a, there is already an element in this that I'm not entirely happy with, and it is that uh, little bit of branch. I don't know if you can see it, just, just here, up here in the corner. So there's a little bit of branch sticking out there that I can't really do very much with. Um, obviously trying to minimize the amount of sky that's in the shot as well. But uh, we've got some lovely movement coming down through there. Uh, I really like as well, I think you can see my finger here, this cluster of trees just here up on the, on the side there, on the, on the left hand side of the bank. I've tried to incorporate those into the shot. So it's a fairly wide shot. I've tried to minimize the amount of sky that's in there. So I will take that image and then we'll have a look at it. So there it is. There's, there's the actual image on the back of the screen. The actual, uh, that's the image that I've actually taken. Um, I think it's looking really nice, the minimum amount of sky in there, so there's, there's very little blown out highlights. In fact, I don't think there are any blown out highlights at all in the shot, so that's really good. Um, I'll pop that up on the screen for you to take a look at. This is another one of those images that you can shoot in either landscape or portrait orientation. It's, it's really your preference. Uh, and in fact, everything about your photography should be your preference. I, I used to only shoot in, in landscape orientation, but now I'll shoot in landscape or portrait. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll recompose this image in portrait to show you what it looks like there. 
but um, don't be afraid to experiment with your photography. Get out there, get shooting, experiment with photography, especially if you're doing the long exposure stuff. The, the more you work at it, the better you'll get at it. But um, it's just enjoy it, just have fun with it. So there's the image recomposed in portrait. Uh, again, there's a bit of compromise involved with the composition, trying to minimize the amount of sky that's in that image, which means having to lose maybe a little bit of the incorporated mill on the right-hand side there. But uh, I don't see it's too much of a problem. There's some nice color there, some nice greens, some nice movement. Um, as I said, it, 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 your photography is all about what you want to see. It's about you experimenting with your images and, and how you want to portray the scene that you're looking at. So don't be afraid to, to try something different. Don't be afraid to do things your own way. Well, I think that's it for today, folks. I think, uh, I think we've covered pretty much everything here that's, that's worth looking at photographing. As I said, it's a beautiful piece of woodland. Uh, one of my favorite areas to come and walk or do photography or bring the kids, uh, anything like that. But if you do visit the place, do respect it. Uh, that last image that I took, I should pop up on the screen for you now. Uh, and if you've enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up and consider sub subscribing to my channel so that uh, you don't miss any future videos. If, uh, if there's anywhere in particular you'd like me to visit and do a video on, please do let me know in the comments and I will, uh, I will consider all my options. But in the meantime, thank you ever so much for joining me. I hope to see you all again very soon.